from Atlanta, Georgia, welcome to Fearfully and Wonderfully Me, a podcast for women on leadership and life skills with Rhea Story. Rhea shares powerful life and leadership principles, helping you maximize your potential and become the woman God created you to be. Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's episode, No Excuses, No Problems. It's kind of one of the subjects I talk about um, uh, often because I think it's Number one, it's very near and dear to my heart because I think it's the number one key um, to being successful, both as an individual, as a woman, but but as a leader. Um, no excuses, no problems. And, you know, it's something that it's very easy to say. It's very difficult to do. And I know that. I mean, I, I can tell you um, oodles and oodles of examples over the years where I catch myself, even though I know I shouldn't, I catch myself making an excuse as to why I couldn't do something or can't have something. And yet when I find I challenge my excuses and get rid of them, I also find that I eliminate most of the obstacles and problems. And it's a mindset shift. It's a mindset shift. And and we almost have to make that mindset shift um, every day. But the power in being successful is the ability to overcome our excuses. So I want to share with you um, probably one of maybe one of the very top examples I've seen of someone who's really embraced this mindset, because I think that we can learn from individuals like that who've who've really learned to embrace that mindset because, you know, they challenge us to, to think outside of our our problems and and start thinking of opportunities. It's been um, several years ago. Um, Mac and I don't really watch uh, much TV. We we'll watch movies occasionally, but but we don't really watch TV and um, sports even less so. Um, but several years ago, I remember we were watching a, a football game. And one of the players um, at the time was for UCF. And I think it was a championship game, maybe um, even. But one of the players, I'd never heard of him until I saw this football game. And I'm, let me tell you, it was one of the best games um, that I'd ever seen. Not because it was a close game or because it was the most exciting or the biggest um, plays were made or because my team won. It was the best because Shaquem Griffin was one of the players, or or he was the player that I wanted to share with you today. And he played with more, just more heart and determination and just more sheer grit than any other football player or probably any other sports um, uh, competitor I've ever seen. I mean, just relentlessly at play after play, he would get back up and over and over, just, he just played with so much determination. Um, It was inspiring to see. I mean, he had just had an, a single-minded focus, and it was like his mission on earth um, to be successful in that ball game. Now, what makes it very impressive is that he only has one hand. A football player at, at the collegiate championship level has just one hand, and he's playing very successfully. In fact, he's playing better than, than a lot of the players or most of the players out there with two hands. And, you know, he inspired me so much that I did some research on him and I went back and I I learned a lot about his story. And um, his Shaquem's left hand was amputated at age four due to um, an infection and disease. And he, he never let it stop him from his dream of playing football along with his twin brother. And more than that, he never let it stop him from being a whole person. And he really makes it his motto and his point to say no excuses. Um, I love a a quote from him. Um, He loves to say, and I'm quoting him from an interview he did with Sports Illustrated, a lot of people in our generation like to make excuses about little things that don't really hinder them from doing what they want to. And when I stop to think about that, I mean, Absolutely, it's true that a lot of people um, in his generation make excuses, but I don't think it's just his generation, right? I think it's all of us. I know I've done it myself is to make an excuse as to why I can't do something. I've shared with you uh, my marathon in five seconds story, right? All too often, we allow an ability or a disability, 
an experience, or maybe just circumstances to define us. You know, we take a fact of life and we create the obstacle out of it. We create an excuse instead of creating a way around or over or through whatever it is we think is standing in our way. I know I can tell you there are probably dozens or hundreds of of young men who would say, I can't play football successfully, um, competitively at, at the collegiate level with just one hand. And so they wouldn't even try. And yet Shaquem has done that in just an incredible way. Um, I, I just, I love that example because he's absolutely said no excuses, no problems, right? I think a lot of times we allow an excuse to hold us back from achieving what we wanted because we're not willing to to pay the price of success. And then sometimes we tell ourselves, uh, I didn't really want it that bad anyway. He, um, Shaquem goes on to say, um, it's not a deformity unless I make it one. I'm not disabled or you're not disabled unless you say I'm disabled. Really powerful quote there, right? I mean, it definitely challenges me to, to start thinking about what excuses do I make um, from, from day to day? Uh, it's so easy to, to get our excuses in that in that mindset of getting our excuses and collecting them, um, kind of like stamps or coins or um, spoons that we might hang on the wall. And, and yet I catch myself every time I, I see those excuses coming up and I, I'm shifting into that excuse mindset. I want to catch myself and get out of it and say, you know what? I'm not a victim unless I say I am. You know, we're not disabled until we claim that we are. We aren't failures until, you, until we say we are. It's always possible until you say it isn't. You know, I think successful, resilient people realize that we can look for a way out or we can look for an excuse, but whatever we look for, we're going to find. Um, Absolutely true. So think about that. I want to give you a, a, a really good, powerful tip I learned about navigating through those excuses. When when something comes up and we find ourselves wanting to create an excuse or, or embrace that victim mindset, it's not a question of, can I do something? But ask yourself, put a very powerful three-letter word in front of that question. It's not a question of, can I achieve something? But a question of, how can I? How can I achieve that, right? Put that three-letter powerful, very, very powerful, it changes from can I to how can I? And here's why. If I say, can I do something or can you do something? That leaves possibility and the assumption that the answer could be no. But if we say, how can I do something? It just assumes that the answer is yes. Then it's just a a way of figuring out how to do it, right? Then it's just, yes, we are going to do it. The only question is, how? Until next time. Start increasing your influence and maximizing your potential with Rhea's audiobooks. Available at audible.com, amazon.com, and iBooks. Please visit RiaStory.com to learn about Rhea's books, resources, speaking, and training programs. Thanks for listening.